let's start our discussion अच्छा तुम्हारा कथा सुनते प्रोग्राम दिस इज जस्ट अन okay and the method of writing program is also not very tough apparently it is tough but it is really very simple let's see what is that particular chapter its name is as you see interrupt programming for every microcontroller this is an important chapter now what is an interrupt any external or interrupts uh, internal signal that are actually trying to get the attention of a processor is called an interrupt okay this signal normally it appears at some pin of the microprocessor or microcontroller okay when the microprocessor or microcontroller is busy in executing some instructions in its main program okay then some external signal appears at some pin and requests the attention of the processor okay then what the processor does then the processor first completes the execution of the uh, current instruction then after the current instruction is being executed it's completed okay then it will suspend the execution of main program temporarily it will not execute any other instruction okay then what it will do the processor and the controller will attend the signal this external or internal internal signal how would you attend it will just execute another sub program or sub routine so this external signal is called or internal signal that interrupts the normal sequence of execution of program is called interrupt signal okay now it is something like say we are busy in a class e some of our family member says something to us something to me or something to any of you then you are distracted you are interrupted who is the interrupt your family member your father your mother your sister uh, brother friend okay will serve as an interrupt so your task of attending class will be interrupted what you will do you will suspend attending classes and then you attend to that particular interrupt interrupting person after you attend how you attend to talk to that particular person interrupting person and you do some other work after your job is done you go back to attend class you go back to attend class here also same thing when the processor or controller is interrupted by some ex external or internal internal signal it will complete the execution of the current instruction then it will suspend the execution of the main program it will not execute anything now any more and the processor or the controller will attend the signal how 
it will how it will attend it will execute another sub program which sub program it is a sub program that is fixed for that particular interrupt signal it is dedicated for that particular interrupt signal so it will attend that particular thing after the execution of the sub program is complete the program control will go back to the main program to execute rest of the instructions in the program okay so that is the concept of interrupt so our main program see our when a microprocessor or microcontroller executes interrupt executes main program our first figure shows that just the main program there are sequence of execution So there are sequence of executions, and it's a simple thing. But when it is a, a program with interrupt, what will happen? First, the microprocessor or microcontroller will execute some main program. As soon as one interrupt comes, it will be interrupted. It will suspend execution of the main program. It will go to one sub routine. Okay, or service routine. This service routine is called interrupt service routine. It is abbreviated as ISR. So ISR is nothing but a group of instructions, okay, that are stored in some other memory area. ISR is a group of instructions that are stored in some other memory area. Okay, so microcontroller will go to this particular. ISR region interrupt service routine, and it will execute that group of instructions. After the instruction execution is complete, it will come back to the main program, and again it will be executed. Again, when another interrupt comes, it will go to the corresponding ISR interrupt service routine for that interrupt. It could be a same interrupt coming repeatedly. Or a new different interrupt. If there is a new different interrupt, its I S R will be different. If the same interrupt is coming again, it will go to the same region of I S R, and it will be executed, and again it will come back. So it will happen repeatedly. Okay. So that is uh, the concept of the execution of program with interrupt. Now. there is one more important thing i should say that i told one more thing that the pro processor or controller attends the signal by executing a sub program the question is how it attends actually to be saying in a general way there are two broad methods of attending any particular signal how one is called a status check method another is called a interrupt driven method in the first okay uh, uh, in the uh, previous cases when i said it attends the signal by executing a sub routine that is one method of attending a signal it is called a interrupt driven signal when some external interrupt comes it goes to a sub sub routine it goes to isr that is interrupt driven method but one more method is there called status check method status check method let's see what do you mean by this status check method here the microprocessor or microcontroller will check the status of the signal continuously okay what is happening say it is something like say when i take a class for you i deliver some lecture at the same time i i continuously i am continuously looking at the door i expect that somebody will come at the door will knock the door i have to open the door i have to talk to the person and after the person goes then only i can take class so what i'll do say normally i say some lines to you i say some words to you and again i look at the door again i talk something to you and again i look at the door 
So looking at the door will be happening in a repeated manner with some time interval. Okay. So I am intermittently checking the door, expecting that someone will knock the door and will just talk to me. So what happens actually? Or another option may be that I just before while taking a class, I decide that I will ch uh, just check the door. What I do? I will not take any class. I will go to the door, wait there, okay, until and unless somebody is knocking the door. So I am continuously checking the status of the door. I am continuously checking the status of the door. Either I am tied in a loop, I wait sitting beside the door and I don't do any other work. I don't do any other work. I am tied in a loop. Or another option is I do some work but not in a full concentration. I do it intermittently. I do some work and again I go to the door. I look and come back and again do some work. Again go to the door and, and check and again come back. So I am busy by checking the status of the door continuously. Microcontroller or microprocessor is also busy in checking the status of some pin, whether some signal has arrived there or not. Okay. So this is called a status check method. This is a status check method. Here, while checking the status of the door or the status of the pin, microcontroller may execute the main program intermittently or may be tied in a loop permanently until or unless the job is job of checking status is over. So obviously you can see therefore a significant time is wasted just for checking the status because microcontroller or microprocessor cannot do its original task, the task of executing main program. Okay. Either at all or significantly. Okay, so here for here writing program is relatively easy. Just checking the status of the pin. Okay. And nothing else. So it's quite easy. But in interrupt driven method, what happens? The microcontroller continues the execution of the main program freely. It will not check the status of the door. It will not check the status of the pin. Okay. Only when some interrupt comes and it goes to the, when some knocking sound comes, the sound goes to the ear. The sound goes to the ear okay, of, the, uh, uh, of the person. Then only the person will suspend his or her job. Similarly, when some signal appears at some pin, the main program will be suspended temporarily and the microcontroller will attend the signal by executing another ISR, one particular ISR, interrupt service routine. So here no time is wasted. Microcontroller runs freely, go on, it goes on executing main program freely. Only when some interrupt signal comes at some pin, okay, it goes to execute some subroutine after being interrupted. Obviously, it is a very time efficient program and also sometimes memory efficient too. Okay, it, it need not be busy in wasting time of for checking statuses of any door or any pin continuously. So that is the interrupt driven method. Now the next question is what are the different type of interrupt signals present in a microcontroller, our AVR microcontroller? It actually depends on the type of the microcontroller. For 8051, one type of interrupt signal. For 8085 microprocessor, another type of interrupt signal. It depends on the type of the microprocessor 
or microcontroller. For our case, for us, these are the interrupt signals. A timer counter overflow interrupt means when one timer or counter attains overflow, that overflow will serve as an interrupt signal. This is obviously an internal interrupt, internal signal. Why? Because the timer or counter it exists, okay, internally inside some program, it is generated inside the microcontroller. Okay. Another type of timer counter is that a compare match. The timer or counter does not overflow. It, it, the value of the count register is compared with a match value. When the match appears, when it is equal to some pre-assigned value, then some some interrupt will be generated. So it's a timer counter compare match interrupt signal. Then comes the, some external signals. External interrupt signal. What is that? External hardware interrupt. Some external voltage. Some external voltage that appears some pin of the microcontroller. That appears at some pin of the microcontroller or microprocessor. Then comes user interrupt. Universal synchronous asyn asynchronous receiver transmitter. Universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitter interrupt. When we want to go for transmitting things in serial mode, serial communication through one particular pin, once the data is transmitted completely say, uh, serially, then it is a transmit interrupt. When the data is received serially completely, it is a receive interrupt. So all these interrupting signals will tell the microcontroller that, okay, the job is over, the task is over. Then comes SPI interrupt. SPI is another type of protocol called serial peripheral interface. Serial peripheral interface. Then comes ADC interrupt. When some analog to digital conversion is complete, the ADC generates some interrupt signal. I already covered the ADC just before this class. Okay. So when ADC has completed the conversion from analog to digital, then it will generate one interrupt signal and microprocessor or microcontroller may be interrupted. Uh, other uh, interrupts are also the watchdog timer. I don't want to say anything on watchdog timer right now. And uh, there are some other interrupt types also present. So these are some interrupt signals. So a large amount of signals are present in our Atmega 2560 microcontroller. Now the thing is, how the what are the conditions for which our microcontroller will respond to an interrupt signal? Will respond to some interrupt signal? There are two conditions for activation. First thing is when interrupt signal is present, really there is some interrupt means either the timer or counter will overflow, or some compare match is there, or some serial communication is complete or some SPI transfer is there, something like when the interrupt is present physically, interrupt is present physically. And second condition is that when the interrupt system is enabled, means when the microprocessor or microcontroller is activated properly so that it can hear, it can detect the presence of any interrupting signal. Okay. If I decide that I will go on taking class for you and even when any person knocks the door, I will not go to the door. I will not go to the door. It means what? I have disabled my interrupt system. It means that I have disabled my interrupt system. So even when some practical interrupt signal is present, at the door or at some pin, I am not interrupted at all. I ignore completely those interrupting signals. Okay. So the important condition is that the interrupt system, interrupt system of a microcontroller must be enabled properly. Interrupt system of a microcontroller or a microprocessor must be enabled properly then only the microprocessor or microcontroller will be able to detect the presence of an interrupt. 
So these are the two conditions for activation. Now we want to just examine these two conditions separately. First one is when internal signal is present. Interrupt signal is present. This means so. How, how do you know that an interrupt signal is present? How does the microcontroller know when an interrupt signal is present? We want to investigate it, this thing first. For every interrupting signal, there is a corresponding interrupt flag bit. When some interrupt signal is really present, that corresponding flag bit will be one. That will be set. And once that flag bit is set, microcontroller will assume that yes, some interrupt signal is present. I can tell you say for this, when a timer counter overflow interrupt overflow is there, some overflow flag bit will be one. Similarly, when a timer counter compare match takes place, then some corresponding flag will be one. Similarly, for external hardware interrupt also there are corresponding flag bit that will be one on presence of that external hardware signal. So for every, for user, user interrupt, SPI, ADC, watch, whatever it may be, there are corresponding flag bits, internal flag bits. When that flag bit is one, microcontroller will assume that yes, some interrupt signal is present. Okay. And then if the interrupt is enabled properly, microcontroller will just detect it. Okay. So now let's see uh, 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 the, just the interrupt of a, a timer interrupt or a counter interrupt. We want to say this thing now, a timer interrupt. Okay. How it works, how we can handle this particular thing. Again, I go back to this particular figure I already told you. But now there are some differences. Whenever the timer operates with some physical and all such thing, the selected timer, when the timer overflows, then a TOB flag, you already know TOB flag, it will act as an interrupt signal. It will act as an interrupt signal to that particular microcontroller. Similarly, when the count register, the content of the count register, TCNT, is compared with some output comparison, OCR. When they are equal, when they are equal means a match is found. A match is found. Then some OCF interrupt, output compare flag interrupt, okay, will be there. Previously, what happened? When we wrote our timer program, or what we did, our counter program, we were continuously checking the TOB flag or the OCF, OCF flag. So that program was the status check method, a conventional method. We were checking TOB equal to one. If TOB equal to one, not one, timer is not in overflow. And if TOB equal to one, yes, some overflow is there. Again, if OCF equal to not one, no match is found. As soon as OC is equal to one, yes, a match is found. A match is found. Yeah. Then we say, then the microprocessor or microcontroller will be interrupted automatically. We need not check TOB and OCF. We need not check TOB or OCF. In our previous program, long back, we did it. We were busy. The program was busy in checking TOB flag or OCF flag. But now, no, we don't want to check them anymore. We don't want to check them anymore. Whenever there will be one, they will interrupt the microcontroller. And then microcontroller will go to some corresponding subroutine. When TOB equal to one, it will go to one ISR, interrupt service routine. When OCF is one, it will go to another service routine, another ISR. So there are separate location of ISR. There are separate location of interrupt service routine. Microcontroller after receiving a one, after being interrupted, will go automatically to that corresponding ISR location. And that particular new program will be executed. 
as a reply to the presenting interrupt. Get my point? So that is the principle of operation. Now let's see this interrupt, this particular from that figure. I have extracted only the required part for interrupt. When the count register, okay, for timer zero actually, it is an eight bit timer, timer zero and timer two. When the content of this register is compared with the OCR register, OCR zero A and OCR zero B, a corresponding flag will be set indicating that there is a match. So OCF zero A equal to one. Or OCF zero B equal to one. Correspondingly, it will serve as an interrupt, and microcontroller will go to execute our particular ISR, which is reserved against that particular interrupt. Or another thing is, whenever that count register overflows, then TOB flag will be one. Then it will go to another ISR, another location. Two. Uh, reply that particular presence of interval. Now for timer two, just see timer two. Actually, timer two and timer zero they are same. Only thing is the number will be different. OCF zero A, OCF two A, OCF zero B, OCF two B, TOB zero, TOB two, TCNT zero, TCNT two. OCR zero A, OCR two A, OCR zero B, OCR two B. Things are same, no change. So in eight bit timer, timer zero, timer two, therefore these are the in general we can say that it is. We are writing it with n, n equal to zero or two. OCR N A, OCN T N, OCR N B, OCF N A, OCF N B, N T O B N. So n equal to zero two. In general, we can write it that way. Now note that how to enable the interrupt. Okay, here there is a output control interrupt enable O C I E zero A O C I E zero B O C I E two A O C I E two B. See here. So these are the green colored lines. These green colored lines. These are actually the. We have to make them one to activate the to enable the interrupt system of the microcontroller. These green colored things will be equal to one. We have to make make one through program so that our microcontroller will be enabled. The interrupt system will be enabled. But the physical signal. How do you know that a signal presents? Serving as an interrupt, correspondingly either our OCF N A equal to one, OCF N B equal to one, or T O B N equal to one. But when, even when they are one, the microcontroller will not respond until or unless we make O C I E equal to one or T O I E equal to one. T O means timer overflow, interrupt in a way. So these flags must must be one. And I equal to what? It is a global interrupt in a way. So in the register S range, I bit is set. I bit is there. It is a D7 bit position. So I bit must be one. I will be always one. And where does this O C I E N A or O C I E N B exist? It exists in T I E M S K N register. T I E M is timer interrupt mask S. I cannot remember it. T I M S K actually N N is zero or two. So this is T O I E that must be set to one. Timer output and timer overflow interrupt enable. It is O C I E means output control, output compare interrupt enable A and output compare interrupt enable B. And N means zero or two. N means zero or two. So we have to make them one. So in the TIM SKN register, we have to make them one, and in the S rate register also, I must be equal to one, and TIF R register. This thing will be automatically one. We need not make them one. These things will be automatically one, 
after some overflow or after some compare match so this thing will not be made one only the you have to make the one for green colored for green colored pin green colored bit Let's see how we can do the whole thing. Now, the for our sixteen bit timer, what happens? For eight bit timer, things are just eight bit. Pretty simple. Okay, these are so all eight bit length. For sixteen bit timers, that is timer one, three, four, and five. These are sixteen bit, so there are lower uh, timer count register. L and higher timer count register H and n equal to what one three four five n equal to one three four five when the count increases and goes to a overflow then T O V is a overflow flag T O V one A T O V three A T O V four A T O V five A these are the overflow flag okay these are the overflow flag okay. Now, uh, next is the output compare register. There is some compare match. OCR lower byte and OCR higher byte for the register A. Similarly, there is another register B. So we are back again. It's another third set C. So C are one C, three uh, three C, four C, five C. Okay, and H and L lower byte and higher byte. They will be compared with the the sixteen bit count timer count register. And again, some another interrupt will be there. So there are. Four different type of interrupt available out of timer counter. Okay, and how to enable the interrupt? As I told you, these green colored bits must be set one in the program. For OCI NA output control output compare interrupt enable A is there in the here OCI NA OCI NB. C I N C. These are must be set to one. The I bit must be equal to one. Okay, and this will be also one. Then corresponding interrupt will be enabled. And whenever some flag is one, they will be automatically one. We need not make them one. After becoming one, they will serve as the interrupt signal. It will be clear if I write a complete program. Let's see. Say it is given in the main program. Read the statement very carefully. Statement that you want to follow. In the main program, LED. There is an LED connected. So LED connected to port A point seven. One LED is connected there. External LED. It blinks continuously with T on equal to T off equal to three hundred milliseconds. Means. The LED will be on for 300 millisecond, 
and will be off for again it will be off for 300 milliseconds okay there it will be there so some main program its task is to blink the led at an in interval of 600 milliseconds one cycle 300 on and 300 off so when that main program is continuously running an interrupt is generated by timer 3 at every one second interval an interrupt is generated by timer three at every one second interval okay so who will generate that interrupt timer three will generate that inter interrupt this inter now the timer three will be configured in such a manner that it will reach the overflow timer three will reach the overflow at every one second it will reach the overflow when it starts operating it will take one second to reach overflow and once some overflow is there some overflow interrupt appears okay so this interrupt appears when timer three overflow in its normal mode so the timer will overflow in the normal mode now uh, you know a timer can run in a different modes one such mode we have studied is the normal mode now on appearance of the interrupt what happens the port a point 3 pin toggles and a second led connected to the pin blinks so there are two pins and two leds one pin connected to port a point 7 and another led connected to port a point 3 one connected to the d7 bit another connected connected to the d3 bit the led connected to the d7 bit will be run by main program and led connected to d3 bit or that particular pin will run by the interrupt program okay so uh, we have assumed that the white led there is one white led that will blink in the main program and this led is connected to the d7 bit okay and a red led red led will be there okay it is connected to the d3 bit it will run okay in interrupt routing in the isr so the microcontroller will take one second to reach overflow microcontroller will take one second to reach overflow so whenever some overflow appear occurs an interrupt will be generated after one second Are interrupt will be uh, generated at that time. So, after every one second, one interrupt will be generated by the overflow interrupt, and that will toggle the red LED. So the red LED will be on, and it will remain on for one second. Then again, another overflow occurs, and another interrupt comes, and the red LED will be toggled. again another interrupt comes after one second and again it will be toggled so red led will be high low high low on off on off at every one second but the white led in the main program controlled by the main program <coughs> will be on off on off at an interval of 300 millisecond so what will be our program let's see let's see the video <coughs> okay so let's check it white led in the main program blinking at a faster rate 300 millisecond and red led is blinking at a slower rate at 1 second at 1 second interval at 1 second interval red led is controlled in the main program and white led is controlled in the sorry red led is controlled in the interrupt program isr and white led is controlled in the main program okay let's see 
how we can write a program for that. So first we will load our timer with an appropriate count value so that it will take one second. It will take one second to attain overflow. It is already, it has already been stated, illustrated in the timer chapter, timer counter chapter to generate one second interval, one second inter, uh, uh, time to overflow, pcnt 3 h the upper higher byte of the timer counter register will be C2 hex and TCNT3 will be F7 hex. Please consult the corresponding tutorial. It is, I think, chapter, which chapter? Chapter number three, I think. No, chapter four, I think, maybe. Okay, so that particular thing. And TCR3 and TCCR3 and TCCR3B, they are set for the timer to run in normal mode with a pre-scaler of 1 is to 1024. This part already done previously. Is that required? Only one thing we have not done is whenever some overflow attains, that overflow will serve as the interrupt. That is not yet done. Whenever some overflow is raised, the overflow is generated an interrupt signal to the microcontroller. That is not done. How to do that thing? I'm telling it. See, first we write port A 7 pin 7, that is port A point 7. Okay, it is pin 7. And port A 3 pin is pin 3 actually. Now we are setting the direction. PA 7 pin means pin 7. And PA3 pin, uh, PA3 pin means pin 3. So, port A points are port, these are the output pins actually. These are the output pins. Actually, there will be one more. Just one minute. Some hash will be there. I have copied it. So, it will be, there will be one. Just one minute. So it will be actually here. It is the comment line, so better that I write it here. Oh. So uh, it's just to I want to save it otherwise. So it is there. So our these two pins are for the acting as an output pin. Now our time the CNT phase, the CNT 3L will be loaded with the normal value. And this is CR3, this is CR3B, this is will be for timer 3. Running in normal mode with that particular pin scalar. Now, since we want to note one thing. Since we want to use the overflow flag for timer 3 as an interrupt flag, so you, we have to make TOI 3 pin equal to 1, bit 1. What is that? I want to show you here. Say TOI in the TIEM SK3 register, in the TIEM SK3 register, the TOI 3 bit must be 1. That TOI3 bit must be 1. So, how to make TOI3 bit 1? It is the timer overflow interrupt enable. Timer overflow interrupt enable. And n equal to 3. We are n equal to 3 because we are using timer 3. So, TOI3 bit must be 1 in that particular register, TIM SK register. So, in TIM SK3 register, TOI3 flag must be equal to 1. Okay. And it's enabled timer 3 interrupt. Timer 3 interrupt is now enabled. Then we have to make I bit equal to 1. 
IBT super either you can write S raise equal to in bracket one less than less than seven. You can write it less than less than eight. Or there is a easier way of doing thing. You simply write SCI. SCI writing SCI means set I bit or set interrupt. I bit will be one. Okay. So now our timer three interrupt has been enabled. Our interrupt system is configured for our microcontroller. Okay. Now when the timer starts running, and as soon as it attains overflow, then TOI three. Then what happens? As soon as it attains overflow, what happens? Our uh, TOB flag. You see, as soon as it attains overflow. Our TOB flag, TOB three, must be will be equal to one, and it will generate one interrupt signal. It will be TOB three. It will be equal to one. Okay, and some interrupt will will come. So that is we have configured the interrupt system properly. So that is our setup program. In the loop program, what we do? Our loop program will be our main program. Just it will blink the white LED connected to port A point seven pin. P A seven pin means it is the pin number seven. So this is the pin number seven. This case, that's pin number seven. Yeah. So our white LED is blinking continuously with 320 seconds. Note that you can use another timer to generate a 300 millisecond delay. Okay, you can generate another timer program. Okay, with a 300 millisecond delay. Yeah, I have not done it. I just made it simple. You already know how to generate a delay program of 300 millisecond. The technique is known. So this is our main program. Now, as soon as our timer overflows, it it starts from it when uh, okay, it is the appropriate count value from that particular count. It will take one second time to attain overflow. As soon as some overflow is generated, some interrupt will be generated. Then we have to write ISR within bracket timer three underscore OVA. Over here means overflow underscore vec. It is called actually a vector table, interrupt vector table. Whenever some interrupt comes, it will go to a particular direction, particular location. We call it a vector. A vector has a particular direction, so this location is fixed. So when we write timer three underscore over here underscore vec, the compiler knows the meaning of this particular line. Some Address is fixed for that. Instead of writing ISR, you could write the actual address where the ISR is written. It is fixed actually. But then you have to consult the data sheet, which is unnecessary. This will run in all the compiler. It will run in all the compiler, irrespective of the compiler. It will run. So for timer three interrupt overflow, it will go to the location. A particular interrupt vector table is there, where we are writing our program. What we'll write there? Once some overflow is reached and is attained, again we are loading the counter register for the next overflow. We want to make it ready for the ne next overflow. So this is the initial value of count timer count counter register. Is we are reloading the value. We are reloading the value so that now it will be ready for the next overflow. And the overflow flag will be automatically reset. We need not reset the overflow flag. In interrupt operation, overflow flag is automatically reset, so that again the timer will start counting automatically. Okay, and after the timer attains an overflow. It will toggle the port a bit, port a pin, all the pins. 
actually what happens this cap symbol is the this is a symbol of exclusive or exclusive or xor operation we know when we xor anything with one the thing is complemented it toggles so we are toggling the port a point 3 pin d3 pin of port a so the red led connected to that pin will be toggled if it was off now it will be on if it was on now it will be um, off so 0 1 0 1 it will go this way so every time there is a there is a there is a timer overflow the microcontroller will suspend the execution of the main program in the loop the microcontroller will suspend the execution of the main program within the loop and it will come out of the loop and will go to the interrupt vector table in the isr it will go to the isr or interrupt service routine or we also call it interrupt vector table we we'll go there where we have written another program we in that program what we do we do two things first we make the timer ready for the next operation second the particular pin where led is connected will be toggled will be complemented after that it will come back to the main program after that it will come back to the main program get my point so that is that particular program so it's very simple so that is our simple style of writing program only thing is it is conceptual in nature and once you are able to write it it is very easy for you any question i'll go to another program say an onboard led is there you know onboard led is connected always to pin number 13 it is the arduino pin arduino pin terminal 13 practically it is the port b.7 d7 b the port b so that led blinks every one second and this is controlled by timer 3 at interrupt driven normal mode with some free scaler already given and another led is connected to port a point 7 pin 29 it blinks also this is controlled by timer 5 at interrupt driven 30 okay so you see now two timers are working simultaneously one timer timer 3 in interrupt driven mode it will whenever some timer 3 overflows the onboard led connected to pin 13 will be toggled will be blinking and there is a second led connected to port a.7 which is controlled by another timer interrupt okay that timer is timer 5 whenever it overflows it toggles the port a.7 or pin 29 okay pin 29 of the at mega microcontroller okay uh, pin 29 is the uh, arduino pin actually yeah and the counter 5 note that the counter 5 actually the timer 5 works in counter mode so timer 3 works in timer mode but timer 5 works now in counter mode the counter 5 so counter mode means it needs some external pulse it does not increment on the square wave pulse or the crystal quartz oscillator the counter 5 will receive its external pulse at its t5 pin t5 pin means pin 47 t5 pin is the pin through which timer 5 will receive or counter 5 will receive external signal external pulse external pulse okay so that is our pin 47 so we have to generate an external pulse somehow and that external pulse will be generated how it is generated it's by another pin 30 of the board in the main program so the external pulse will be generated by a main program our external pulse will be generated by the main program 
okay and that will come out to the may pin 30 that will come out to the pin 30 of the board and that external pulse ka after coming out from pin 30 will be applied to the t5 pin pin 47 so ultimately what is that the whole thing is drawn here the whole thing is drawn here first you see our main program The main pro the task of the main program is to generate an external pulse. If the main program an external a pulse is generated, and that pulse is coming out of pin thirty, it is coming out of pin thirty, and that pulse is applied to the T five pin, that is for counter five. The counter five works in the interrupt driven mode. Whenever the counter five overflows. it will go to isr whenever counter five overflows it will go to its isr okay now whenever it overflows what will what it will do it will go to isr and in the isr interrupt service routine what it does it makes it gener it uh, it complements the pin status If that pin twenty nine is one, it will it will be now zero. If it was zero, it will be now one. So it will toggle. It will toggle. So it will toggle there. Yeah. And again, what happens? So that's how the toggling operation will be there, and some LED is connected to. Uh, pin twenty nine. Another LED is connected to pin twenty nine, which is port A point seven. So this timer five works in counter mode, and timer three works in timer mode. Automatically, it will attain overflow at every one second. Timer three will attain overflow at every one second, and it will complement the onboard LED status. After attaining overflow. It will toggle the LED. It will toggle the pin. In third, it means port B point seven. It will toggle. So we are writing a program to do three things. First, an interrupt program. Second, one timer in timer mode. Third, one timer in counter mode. So we are doing lot of things just in one program. How? Let's see this particular thing. Before that, so our see that in pin twenty nine there is an external LED connected, and onboard LED is pin number thirteen. So onboard LED pin number thirteen connected to pin number thirteen will be driven by a timer, interrupt driven timer, and the external LED that will connect at pin twenty nine will be controlled by The uh, the counter counter five and the counter five it increments its value upon receiving a train of pulse. The pulse is generated in the main program through pin number thirty. So that is the thing. Now let's see. First, I we want to see the video. This is the onboard LED. Onboard LED, and this is the external LED. External LED and onboard. Timer three at one second interval, and the external LED is controlled by. The external LED is controlled by the counter five upon receiving external pulse. Let's see how we can write a program. First, we identify all the pins: pin number thirteen, twenty-nine, forty-seven, and thirty. Pin number thirty, twenty-nine, and thirty will act as the output pin, and pin number forty-seven will act as an input pin. 
So four B seven. This screen thirteen will be there. Four B one two is screen thirteen on board. Then pulse screen screen thirteen. Screen number seven. Actually, pin thirty it is the port C point seven. If you see the pin mapping of the Arduino, you go to the net. In the internet, you can get all the pin mapping. Or I also already gave you in some previous presentation. So pin number thirty is that particular pin port C point seven, and pin number forty seven is port L point two. Okay. So it is C five pin. Pin forty seven is the C five pin. It is the input pin. And port A point seven pin is the pin twenty nine pin. Pin twenty nine, where some external LED is connected. So these are the things. Now I go on writing rest of the program. First setup program we configure. Say our port B point seven is output pin. PB seven pin means what? It is seven actually. So it is seven. So it is PB DDR B point seven will be one. DDR B point seven will be one. Now port L point two pin is input pin. So you are making it zero. Input pin zero. Similarly, port A point seven DDR A point seven pin. Will be one. That is output. And DDR C point seven port C point seven is output. Okay. We have configured all the required pins. Now, what is TCMT three H and TCMT three L? Note that I already told you. TCMT three H and three L. Its content will be. Its content is C two F seven X, C two F seven X. But the same thing can be done in a different way. Actually, they will start counting from this value until the overflow that is double F double F X and then zero 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 X is there. The same thing can be written. In a different way. Just wait. Okay. Not working. Just one minute. It remains stands still. Yes, it's now working. So the same thing can be done in another way. That I am writing the actually the decimal equivalent of that. Okay. So C two now. How many counts do we need? How many counts do we need? So it will be from overflow to negative direction. It will be there. It is one five seven two five count downward, one five six two five count downward with respect to the maximum overflow value. So it will the it will take that much of count to reach one second. So that calculation is already given in your previous slides. But instead of converting it to hex value, I am writing it that way. So when we write it, write greater than greater than eight, the upper byte will be stored here, and the lower byte will be stored in the L value, L register. Okay. So for a one second of stable pulse, so with respect to the maximum count zero 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 x, how much we need to go down? So from minus this, minus means it is actually the Decimal hex equivalent. It will be something like C to F seven hex. Okay, so that will also just it is another way of estimating time. First, we'll estimate how much count we need to generate a delay of one second. Then we'll write minus of that count. So from that, it will reach 
zero 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 hex. From negative, it will, it will reach zero 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 hex. Means overflow value. So that is an easier way of writing things. Easier way of writing things. Okay. So if you count, actually I am telling you, if you count zero 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 hex minus C two F seven hex and take the decimal equivalent. You will get that particular decimal value zero 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 x minus two f seven x is the difference in value. So that difference in value is the number of states it has to pass. So the difference in value zero zero x zero zero x minus two f seven x will be actually this minus one five six two five value in decimal obviously. Its higher byte will be actually its Uh, the lower 8 bit will be shifted. The, then when we shift it right by 8 bit, only the upper 8 bit will be there. The upper 8 bit will be stored here, and the lower 8 bit will be stored here. In that. So that is a different way of writing the same thing. You should understand. If the thing thing will get it, and timer three is in the normal mode with a, that preschooler one zero two four. So timer three is just overflow, timer overflow mode. And for counter, what happens? So we just set a count for overflow after that much count. Just I have written it, uh, FD four four X. Just I will try only to generate some time delay. Okay, to generate some time delay. Okay, and. Some pulse will be generated from FD four four X to whenever some external pulse appears, then it will count up until the overflow is reached. When some external pulse appears, it counts up until the overflow is reached. Okay. And now the control register for timer five or counter five. This is the output clock source in counter mode. So counter mode on timer five, P five pin. So our things are ready. Our timer five in counter mode, timer three in timer mode. Their set values are stored there. Initial values, everything ready. And now we have to configure the interrupt. For timer three interrupt, we have to enable TY three bit one in the TIM SK three register. For timer five, we have to set TOI five, TOI five bit one in the TIM SK five register. So n equal to three in the first case and n equal to five in the second case. The ACI is the interrupt, enable interrupt globally, and we are ju just generating. We are just introducing a delay of one millisecond. This is not mandatory, but I have done it. Why? It will take some small time to configure the interrupt. It will that take some just I am giving some extra time of around one millisecond to make the microcontroller ready. Okay, to make the microcontroller ready. It is not essential, but sometimes it's a good habit of introducing a delay after setting things according to our okay. Required configuration. So now, in the setup program, things are ready. Okay, we go to the loop. Loop is very simple. Okay, the main program will be executed. A pulse will be generated with a delay of one millisecond. So high low, high low. So it's a pulse of one millisecond. So you see that pulse. So it is a pulse of one millisecond high and one millisecond low. The external pulse that we are generating in the pin thirty will be one millisecond high and one millisecond low. And after one high and one low, it will reach a T five pin and our counter five or timer five will be now incremented by one. After we get a one complete cycle of one high and one low at an interval of one plus one two millisecond. The counter five will in will be incremented until it reaches the overflow. Whenever it reaches overflow, 
it will go to ISR. In the ISR, external LED will be toggled. So in the so we are generating a external pulse in the pin 30. And wherever some interrupt is attained by the timer three, wherever some interrupt is attained by timer three, as well as timer five, they will go to their corresponding ISR. The ISR for timer five will be required to toggle the external LED, and the ISR three for timer three will be required to toggle the onboard LED at pin thirteen. So now we are writing our after loop, we are writing our ISR program. Timer 3, OBF underscore VEC. So we are just again reloading the timer 3 for the next overflow. We are making ready the timer 3 for next overflow. Yes. And port B, it will be toggled. Port B.7 means what? It is the onboard LED. Pin number 13. Onboard LED or pin number 13. And here our timer. Five workflow, we are just making it ready. So that it will just overflow. It will reach overflow. And after reaching overflow, the port A pin, port A.7 will be toggled. Where some external LED is connected where some external LED is connected. So today I want to stop with that particular thing. There are some more time of interrupt operation. I will advise you to study the program thoroughly. Today I shall send you the material. Today I shall send you the material after this class. You please read this material up to this. Don't try to read external interrupt. No, don't read. Read only up to this. Okay.